It's The Real News. I'm Aaron Maté. President Trump has had several major cabinet shakeups since taking office, but his latest is his boldest yet. Earlier today, Trump announcing that Rex Tillerson is out as Secretary of State, replaced by CIA Director Mike Pompeo. And replacing Pompeo at CIA is his deputy, Gina Haspel. Trump spoke to reporters on the White House South Lawn. I've worked with Mike Pompeo now for quite some time. Tremendous energy, tremendous intellect. We're always on the same wavelength. Uh, the relationship has been very good, and uh, that's what I need as Secretary of State. I wish Rex Tillerson well. Gina, by the way, who I know very well, who I've worked very closely, will be the first woman director of the CIA. She's an outstanding person who also I have gotten to know very well. So I've gotten to know a lot of people very well over the last year. And I'm really at a point where we're getting very close to having the cabinet and other things that I want. In elevating Pompeo, Trump would have a secretary of state even more in line with confronting Iran. And in installing Gina Haspel as head of the CIA, Trump also has someone who would be in line with one of his other defining views, embracing torture. Haspel was in charge of the CIA's first secret overseas prison site in Thailand. And there she oversaw the torture of two prisoners and later ordered the destruction of video footage that caught their abuse on camera. Joining me is Marcy Wheeler, national security reporter whose website is mtwheel.net. Welcome, Marcy. Lots to talk about. Let's start with the presumptive new CIA director, Gina Haspel. Tell us about her record. As you said, she was the chief of station for the first black site or for the Thai, for Thailand, um, where the first black site for our torture program was. And so she oversaw the torture of Abu Zubaida and Abdel Rahim al-Nashiri um, in 2002, when, when really CIA was just experimenting with it. In that role, because people are already saying that she was just doing what she was do told, she was just following orders. In that role, she was also particularly sadistic. So she, at times when other people said, um, Abu Zubaydah is fully compliant, he's told us all he knows, would say, you go back and keep torturing him until he tells us more. So that's her role in torture. And then um, while she was still chief of station there in 2002, she said, let's get rid of all of the videos we took of this torture. And CIA didn't permit her to do that in 2002 because there were ongoing investigations. But when in 2005, she and Jose Rodriguez, who uh, kind of instituted the torture program, when they were at a much more senior level at CIA, she said, hey, great idea. Let's get rid of those videos that, um, that we took back in 2002, even though there are court rulings that say we should not be able to get rid of them. And so she oversaw the destruction of them. So both the torture and the cover-up of the torture, that's, that's who we're getting to run the CIA. And for one of those uh, prisoners who was in torture, who was tortured uh, in last year, uh, this nonprofit group in Europe, the European Center for Constitutional and Human Rights, issued a statement uh, calling for an arrest warrant uh, for her. Now I'm wondering, do you think that if she, as the CIA director, if she travels overseas, especially to Europe, where there have been cases around torture and there have been extradition requests for people who commit rights abuses, that she could, she could be vulnerable to arrest? I think people, activists in Europe certainly will try and make that an issue because, yes, um, she is she is on the record as having played a key role in our torture program. And Europe for years has has used whatever leverage they can to um, try and at least shame us for the torture program we've had. And and by the way, both um, Abu Zubaydah, Abu Zubaydah has never been charged. He's still at Gitmo. He's one of those people in this in this kind of holding pattern. And his lawyers every once in a while say, hey, hey something about him. And then um, Nishiri's trial is very troubled right now. And so, you know, she will be undergoing confirmation process at the same time as like daily crazy stuff happens in Gitmo as they try and move closer to finally try this guy. Um, he was allegedly responsible for the U.S. coal bombing in, in 2000, before 9-11. Before so, um, so the entire background, both before and after she gets confirmed, is going to emphasize her role in the torture, which will make for um, a, a pretty 
antagonistic debate about her nomination, I think rightly so. Now, in terms of uh, antagonism, the question for me is whether she'll face serious antagonism from Democrats in the Senate. Uh, Senator Dianne Feinstein, the, the powerful Democratic senator from California, has already indicated today that she will support Haspel's nomination. And on this front, I'm wondering, you know, we famously know that when President Obama took office, he talked about looking forward, not backwards, and essentially not prosecuting those who took part in torture. And I'm wondering um, how much of a role democratic inaction around torture uh, has played in elevating someone like Gina Haspel to the top CIA post today. Well, uh, to, I can't believe I'm going to define d d uh, d defend Diane Feinstein. I don't think she said that she will support Haspel's nomination. I think she has said she will give it a good listen, which probably means she's going to support it. But she also has a real primary challenge this year. And um, I think that, again, this is the kind of thing that, that people can bring some political pressure on Feinstein about. She's no longer the, the ranking member of the Senate Intelligence Committee, which is the committee Haskell's nomination will go through. So that puts her in less of a position to influence it. I mean, I expect that Wyden and Heinrich uh, and, and maybe Kamala Harris uh, will raise that as an issue in the confirmation process. But you're right. I mean, Feinstein is one of those people who's saying, well, she was just doing what she was ordered to do, and and therefore it's it's not that big of a deal. You know, Feinstein, one of Feinstein's laudable actions in her time as a senator is making sure that the Senate report, the Senate torture report actually got finished. And then to have what could be her last year in the Senate, have her you know, rubber stamp this torturer to, to run the whole CIA. Because even, I mean, Aaron, it's terrible enough that this torturer might run the whole CIA. But the other thing is the cover-up, right? Um, there were congressional inquiries into the torture program at the time those videos were destroyed. Uh, Carl Levin, for one, was asking for precisely that kind of, of data. Jay Rockefeller even was, um, Feinstein's predecessor at, as ranking member at, at, on the committee. And so the notion that this woman who oversaw the obstruction of, an invest of multiple investigations into CIA torture, including congressional investigations, the notion that she should become CIA director just invites CIA to continue to refuse all oversight from our democratically elected members of Congress. And that, if you are a member of Congress, should be as important as the torture. They're both important, but the obstruction as a member of Congress, as somebody who's supposed to oversee this agency, that, that really ought to be um, uh, disqualifying, but apparently it's not for Feinstein. Right, you know, speaking of congressional oversight of the CIA, there also was the fact that the CIA, after the initial cover up with the videotapes and so forth, back when the Senate was compiling its torture report, you had the CIA actually spying on the senators who were writing it. Under John Brennan. So, yeah, that's under uh, under Barack Obama. And, and Obama did not side with Dianne Feinstein in that battle. And so it's just, you know, it, it in. That's not the only obstruction. I mean, there were, I, at one point I made a long list and it was a long list of all of the documents on the CIA torture program that disappeared into the ether. And it was a bipartisan effort from 2002 all the way to today. Um, but yeah, you know, this wasn't fixed under Barack Obama. Gina Haspel not only stayed in government, but continued to get promoted. And now she's about to take over the agency and again, you know, for all the complaints about the deep state investigating Donald Trump and being out of control and what have you, confirming Gina Haspel as director of CIA will will further empower whatever uncontrollable power the deep state has. All right, we're gonna leave it there for part one. In part two, we'll talk about Mike Pompeo as a new secretary of state. Marcy Wheeler of mtwill.net, thank you. And thank you for joining us on The Real News.